Hi, I'm the Reverend Leah Vasey Saunders and I'm the Vicar of Lancaster. Leah, can you just tell us a little bit about what's happening today at the Priory? So today we are launching um, an installation, an intervention in the Priory Church at the end of what has been um, 18 months of working on a project across the city um, responding to our shared history around transatlantic slavery. And that's of course the Facing the Past project. Yeah. And can you just talk a little bit about the journey that's brought us to these wonderful um, sculptures that are now in the, uh, the Lancaster Priory as of today? So one of the wonderful things about this project has been commissioning Priory specific research from academic Melinda Elder. And one of the wonderful things about that piece of research is that half of it is yes about dealing with the white Lancastrians who were engaged actively in the slave trade either through owning plantations or ships or um, various other means but the other half of her research has been about uncovering and bringing into the light many black Lancastrians um, people who were here for all sorts of different reasons and a significant number in the registers of the Priory Church we were trying to think about how do we how do we respond to that discovery and we decided that we wanted to do something which would bring black presence in physical form into our space and that's partly um, because we were so moved by the stories that we have learned about but also because we want to think about how do we enable black presence in the space of our church in the future and so in that research there's a story of one girl called Sophia Philine who was baptised in February 1799. The only child in the registers of that history and um, 11 years old and we know nothing else about her, nothing at all. And we were really drawn to that story particularly because the Priory has a long-standing um, relationship with um, Educade, which is a charity in West Africa working with school children. Um, so working with Educade, we then developed some teaching, some sessions to deliver to children over Zoom and to teach them about the history of transatlantic slavery from our perspective and to ask them what they knew and to share with them the stories of some of the children that we know about. There are other children we know about outside of our registers and then ask them specifically how, uh, what they thought about Sophia, how they responded to her story, how they empathised with her, and they imagined her to be beautiful and strong and to have agency and to have experienced joy in her lifetime. Uh, they then had a movement workshop with a practitioner in the UK over Zoom, dancing and moving, expressing their hobbies and their talents and their gifts. And then lots of photographs were taken. Those photographs were developed into 3D images, which have then been taken on further and developed into the sculptures that are in the church today. And from your perspective, what do these sculptures say to you as an individual who's obviously the vicar of Lancaster, but also somebody living in Lancaster today? I mean, I find them really moving and the, when the first one came in for a trial a few weeks ago, I, I did find myself struggling to not, um, not shed a tear because there is something about the presence of children in church, of young children and then when we're thinking about children with a global majority heritage, it's just so important to me that we have a future which is not the same as the past, where we are a really diverse church, where we are a church that welcomes everyone. We were baptising um, black Lancastrians in the 18th and 19th century and yet our churches are not very diverse today and that tells me we've still got something to learn. So when I see these models I'm yearning for and praying for a time when our church will be more diverse and where the children of God will be more representative of the character of God in, in that kind of multi it's kind of a, a multi vocal way at the moment I think we miss so much um, when we don't engage with diversity and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the congregation responds to these and seeing how it makes them feel about our church and where our church has been where we are now and where we might be going to in the future as God calls us to lean into this history and to make a different future I was going to ask you about the future so You've clearly yourself been on a journey this last 18 months. 
and through the Facing the Past project. Um, would you encourage people to do the same if they haven't already done so? And what lies ahead? So, I mean, I think in Lancashire, uh, as in various other parts of the country that are near to ports that have been uh, ports where slavery um, was a part of the trade in those ports, um, Lancashire has a great history and there will be many other churches, I think, across um, the Diocese of Blackburn, but also in the Diocese of Liverpool um, and possibly even further south, um, where there is a history where when people start to look at who these wonderful people are that are named on the walls, when they look at who they are and what they did, they will discover people who have um, legacy and complicity in slavery. Um, I would say don't be afraid of learning the truth. Um, it is what it is. It isn't anything to be defensive about or ashamed of. And I think that because we have done that, we can both own it, but also we can say we are committed to being a different church in the future. The future for Lancaster Priory, in terms of what we do next, um, we're looking to think more about this theme of disruption and about you know, how we disrupt what might be the norm for our experience of church. Partly because I think when we look at Jesus, that's what Jesus does. He doesn't look at what the status quo is. He looks for the marginalised. He looks for those on the fringes of things. And he calls them into community to help to transform it. I think that's what we're looking to do as we move forward. And hopefully that will involve some sort of permanent memorialisation of the black lives that we have discovered in our history. That's great. Thank you very much indeed.